Ah, good morning. Welcome to uh, yeah, April 24th, 2022. I'm Kurt, and this is my daily good life meditation. Well, I knew it couldn't really last, you know, two, two good days, you know, not, not this Friday and yesterday. Um, um, today's not a bad day, but definitely not like it was before. Just uh, feeling a little out of sorts this morning. For no particular good reason. Maybe it's because I stayed up late. Um, Emily's boyfriend Chris is here. We had a really nice dinner. Thank you, Yumiko, for making, not that she'll see this, but just want to thank, thank her in general for making a really nice meal for dinner. And uh, we had a nice time, and I stayed up late. That's probably the reason. Just the routine kind of got upset. Hmm. Otherwise, yesterday was a good day. Did everything that I expected and thought and planned that we would do. And it, uh, I think it was all to good ends. All right, this is what I do every morning to uh, remember my life objectives and principles. So let's get into it. Um, first, the first objective is to uh, be always ready to, to die. Number two is to make good and effective use of time. Number three is to d develop and maintain good and sound life principles. Number four is to cultivate good emotional reactions. And then five, to perform good actions. Six is to recognize my true limits, my true opportunities. And seven is to do just one thing at a time and to do that thing slowly and deliberately. I even slept in this morning. It's a full hour past when I usually get up. That's really, really rare. I mean, that's, you know, mark it on the calendar rare. <laughs> not, that, not, that not, that, not that it's mark it on the calendar important, but uh, it's just so rare that I actually sleep in. I remember hitting the uh, snooze button or turning the alarm off. And then just letting myself go. My 30 principles are. Number one. The principle of war. To always be fighting what, against anything that I think is true or that is proposed to me to be true. I want, it, I want it to run through the gauntlet before I accept it. Two is the principle of reason. And it's the principles of honesty, objectivity, and doubt which is the approach that I want to take to life and the uh, ways of thinking, being, and approaching that will get me there. A third principle is the homunculus, the suggestion and the thought that I don't have a soul, but I do have a little consciousness for a short number of years. Next is the anchor hold, the idea that uh, there's just a, uh, our consciousness exists within us and can't really be, in fact, with anyone else. We can just, uh, you know, shout across this gap between us, make signals, never really touching or being with anyone else, I'm always really alone and certainly dying alone. Next is the home of good and evil. Right and wrong are mere opinions that reside with us. Whew, I am still tired. I can tell I'm going fast, too. I'm going to get this done. Try to move through my, my responsibilities this morning. My Sunday responsibilities. Hmm. Who needs responsibilities on Sunday? That God doesn't even want, want that. After um, that comes the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces. 
everything in the universe that is, including you and me, within the principle of nature. Everything has some particular nature. And it's good to recognize what that is. And then maturity. No, the pirate ride. Free will is an apparent illusion. Though I can't prove that. I think it's true. And then the pirate, and then the maturity. And the seven principles of wisdom and fortitude. And then the social principle. We're social creatures. We need one another. Despite the anchor hold, the distance between us on the anchor hold, relative to the anchor hold. And public speaking, to use few words, carefully chosen words, to be very deliberate in all that I do in towards communication, and to never ever gossip. And then, um, no worship, no um, temperance, and the sub principles of suffering and simplicity and apathy, which is how I approach the world, to uh, consume less and more deliberately, and to recognize what is something beyond me, so that I don't let it upset me too much. The fact that it's happening and recognizing it's beyond me helps me to not get upset, unduly thinking that I can change things that I cannot. And then um, the horror show. Things are bad. Things are happening all the time, all around us. To not only to us and our families, but to our friends and our our uh, our community and our pets and um, wildlife at large. Everything. Life's a pretty awful place in in many many ways. Manifestly so. And the horror is coming for each of us, if not already here. And then um, after the horror show comes that which must be born, carried, and what I have to carry are my responsibilities, my commitments, the fact of the horror show. Then the Feast of Oval is what happens when we've had too much. And we get upset and spew that upset out into the world. After that comes two principles. Distraction, followed by agency and the great indifference. Distraction is a reminder that we distract ourselves through life from uh, the emptiness of the universe, the void, the apparent evidence, uh, or lack of evidence, that is, that God, uh, God exists. We don't want to see that. So we get ourselves busy with uh, all the things in our lives our work and our family and our home and our hobbies, our religion, all keep back uh, the uh, dawning awareness, the suggestion, the idea that we are alone, ultimately. And that death is permanent forever. And, not, and that death is nothing. Not as, in, not as nothing as in not much. There's nothing there. Just entropy. Really not even that. The entropy only applies to our energy and our matter. But then there is nothing else. So I guess it is applies to everything. Hmm. Next comes uh, the best seat in the house. To not want to be anyone else or be anywhere else or be doing anything else but to be okay with who I am, where I am, and what I'm doing. And then the uh, path of wildness, which is a way to move forward into a new life, to a new chapter of life. And then the um, risk of avoiding risk, the deep. Did I do uh, the best seat in the house? I think so. Then the uh, risk of avoiding risk is the deep level and the surface level risks of life. The surface level stuff being, you know, education and family and career, etc. The sur the deep one being taking time to find ourselves, which seems superfluous to some. They don't have an interest in doing that. 
But those of us who feel a longing to find ourselves, that's those, you're the ones I'm, I'm talking about. You better do it. It'll, it'll, it won't go away. It'll bug you all your life. Then sin and damnation. And there are seven sins in my worldview, and the consequence of engaging in any of these is damnation in the here and now. And these sins are <clears throat> falsity, being untrue, credulity, believing things too readily and easily, faith, using the fact of belief as the evidence to support the belief, dogma, believing things due to the, being impressed by a long tradition or or, or a big building, or a, a, a canonical text, or a, or a seeming impressive uh, Ten Commandments. These, these are things that are the trappings of, of institution, of, of a framework of thought and belief, but aren't the evidence that it's true. And then authority, believing something because we're impressed by uh, those who propose it and support it. And then lastly, um, gossip. So I try not to do any of those. Although I do engage in faith in believing that the pirate ride, in the pirate ride, that free will is an illusion. I recognize that fact. So I am one of the faithful, in fact. Complete oblivion. After after death, there's no final reunion with anyone. Our loved ones will never see them again. We'll never have a chance to reconcile with anybody. And there'll be no uh, um, application of justice after death, because death is, you know, permanent and complete. And there's no afterlife, no soul, nothing more to go on. So we'd better do those things now. The reunion, reconciliation, and seeking after justice. Now the great life adventure is one or more experiences that form a centerpiece of our life and help to form our identity. Then the season of philosophy, the time to record what we've learned along the way. And then the uphill climb. No, the bullseye aim, striving for the mark and usually missing. The uphill climb, steadily climbing, rising through life. But what of you? Nothing is enough. A reminder to try to get by with less. And then finally, uh, the principle of fun and the sub-principles of hope and retrospect. Looking to enjoy life now, but looking to enjoy the anticipation of more life and the re remembrance of uh, times past. Now for today. It's a Sunday. Almost all my, my chores are all done. Our shopping is all done. It's a totally free day. Chris is here. Um, I think I'll finish this video. I'll start the upload. I'll read my Bible. Um, uh, Isaiah 21 this morning. And then I'll uh, uh, feed the dogs. And then um, I'll sit down right here to read my book until the family gets up and we have breakfast. Take care. Be safe, but not too safe. <laughs>